my name is Kelly Morris. I'm the park superintendent at Sheldon Lake State Park and Environmental Learning Center. Uh, we're not your traditional state park. One of the neat things here about Sheldon is we provide a resource for urban Texans to experience the natural world. Uh, altogether, our park is 2,800 acres, including a 1,200 acre lake, an array of ponds, wetlands, and prairie that provide a variety of environment and educational opportunities for folks to come and experience. In the early 1940s, the government wanted to establish water opportunities for the war industries along the Houston Ship Channel. So a reservoir was constructed off of Carpenter's Bayou. So the area that was once prairie and farmland is now what we know today as Sheldon so Reservoir. around 1984, the property that was once the Sheldon Wildlife Management Area and Fish Hatchery transitioned into Sheldon Lakes State Park. Over the years, it incorporated the Environmental Learning Center aspect really trying to focus and reach out to urban Texans to provide that outdoor experience uh, into the elements, showing different opportunities that we have. So we have an array of ponds that are allowed for folks to come out and experience. Two of them are catch and release fishing. Uh, whether it's your first time or youth want to come out and see what kind of things they can catch or just practice. You have an 82 foot observation tower that will take you literally to new heights here in Houston. You can see out over the Sheldon Reservoir and all the wildlife that consists there. You can look into the prairie and wetlands that we have as well as look back and see some of the trails we have. One of the neatest things about the very top part of the tower is you can look out and see how industry and nature can coexist together. And you've got this private little hidden pocket nature park right in the middle of Big Houston. Uh, we're very big on our prairie and wetland restoration efforts. Uh, we currently have some expansion going on right now where a boardwalk is being constructed. So for the first time, you'll be able to walk out onto the boardwalk and be surrounded by prairie and wetland on either side and really see the wetland restoration and the prairie restoration efforts that our park staff and our volunteers have spent countless hours on. Hello, I'm Andrew Sippitz with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. I'm the Natural Resource Coordinator for Region 4 State Parks, which is the, for about 20 state parks in Southeast Texas. Uh, Sheldon Lake State Park is one of the parks I take care of. However, I've been involved in the project since prior to my current position at the park. It's Sheldon Lake State Park, about 500 acres of this park have been farmed since it was set aside as a state park. Uh, and actually prior to that even. And uh, we've only recently begun a program to uh, take these farmlands and restore them to a natural landscape. So phase one started as a uh, cornfield, I believe was the last crop in that field. Um, after the crop was harvested that fall, um, we hired a company out of Louisiana to come in and excavate out um, marsh areas, wetland areas. These are areas that had once been marsh, marshland, but when the farming began, um, the farmers drained and filled the marshes in so they could farm the, the land, uh, get the water off the land so they could uh, till it and grow crops. So what we did uh, with that phase one project is actually went into that cropland. We knew where the wetlands used to be using old photos and looking at the soil. And we actually re-excavated those wetlands. The, the dirt the farmer put in the wetlands, we took out. And uh, once that part was complete, we brought a group in that uh, came and planted uh, native wetland plants. They collected marsh plants from around this area uh, in, in small uh, existing marshes and even out of road ditches. And they planted those into these um, recreated wetlands. And uh, when that was complete, the next phase was to plant the surrounding area, the high ground that surrounds the wetlands with uh, prairie, we seeded it with native prairie plants. So this was a, we hired a company that had gone into a prairie, a natural prairie near the state park. They ran a combine across that prairie, harvested the seeds from the grasses, and then they took those seeds and actually planted them in and around the wetland area there at phase one. Well, phase one worked so well that we decided to we were going to continue this and continue to convert the cropland to native prairie and wetlands. And so we embarked on uh, what we called phase two. Uh, the contract to excavate the wetlands out of phase two came in way under bid 
And so we went ahead and added in what we call phase three. We basically doubled the acreage that we thought we were going to do with the amount of money we had. And that went quite well. The wetland planting didn't go as easily as it had with phase one because we are now in the middle of uh, the fifth year of a long drought period. And uh, that has slowed down the, uh, the natural spread of the wetland plants that have been introduced into those wetlands. Yes, the funding for the wetland restoration came from uh, two sources, largely from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's coastal program, and uh, some in-kind contributions from Ducks Unlimited. Ducks Unlimited did the uh, design and actually oversaw the excavation of the wetlands in all three phases, one, two, and three. Okay. Now the planting is being done by Texas AgriLife with uh, what they call their wetland restoration team, which is a group of very dedicated volunteers, as well as their staff. We're potting lizard's tail. Lizard's tail, yes. Right. Awesome, okay. And where will this be planted, Diane? I don't know, out in the wetlands at Sheldon Lake State Park. Great. Not too deep. So were you guys involved in the restoration from the get-go? I was. I was okay. not. Okay. I'm a newbie. So Diane, since you were involved with, with from the get-go, like how do you how do you see the changes or what are your big impressions about all the work that was done out not here? Yet, no, no, yet, no. Well, from the get-go. <laughs> actually, this has been an amazing project and you guys should have been here from the beginning because we started out, it was an agricultural field that was no longer being used. It had been leveled. It was even drier than now. It looked like the Mojave Desert or Death Valley or something like that. And uh, we contoured it so that it approximated the former topography of the land. We planted wetland plants where we thought the water level ought to be, but there was no water there at all. It rained a couple weeks later. The plants just popped into action, and now you really couldn't tell that it was never a wet. That's the part where we started. And this second, third phase, fourth phase, is going to do exactly the same thing here. When Sea Grant and uh, AgriLife Extension ap approached us with the idea, you know, it was something that we had never really done. We hadn't been previously involved with wetland restoration at all, but we recognized the value in wetland restoration and as a best management practice. My agency and my particular uh, group at the Texas State are directly involved with landowners working on non-point source pollution abatement involved with agricultural and civil cultural um, production. So the park um, as it was um, several years ago used to be agricultural production and so converting that back to its natural state, its natural habitat as a wetland um, The innovative work that Marissa and many, many of the volunteers have come out and planted all of these beautiful, now extensive plants um, really shows the success that, that they've had. You know, we really, as a state agency, get dual benefit. You know, Sea Grant is able to come out here, put things on the ground, do innovative work, um, but we're actually able to show water quality improvements. And there is a value that, and an actual physical number that can be placed on the amount of acreage and plants that are actually put here on the ground and being able to show the sediment reduction, the reduction in nutrients, and, and many other great values that 
this wetland actually provides outside of the park. It really adds an extra benefit to us to be able to provide not only local water quality benefits, but the benefits that those local water quality um, successes will improve on a much larger scale, such as the Galveston Bay system. And, and really working with um, multiple entities like that really gets at a multi-agency, multi, -agency, multi uh, Texas AgriLife Extension Service, Texas Sea Grant. The role we've played out here in the wetland restoration at Sheldon Lake State Park and Environmental Learning Center has been primarily in the planting portion of the restoration. Um, we were involved from the very beginning in phase one and plan to see it through to the very end in phase four. And our role has been coordinating with the wetland restoration team, which is a volunteer um, effort that um, brings together the, the staff, um, Texas AgriLife Extension Service staff, um, to work with Texas Master Naturalist volunteers who are trained mentors, um, very specific to wetland restoration. really quickly to look and see, okay, well, how many plants are we going to need to actually get this project done? And at that time, you know, I had just kind of come off of phase one and a little bit of working into phase two, and, you know, we had only had about, at the time, anywhere from like maybe up to about 20,000 plants that we were responsible for. And all of a sudden, with the new funding, it became this much larger task of establishing um, 55,000 um, plants and you can imagine not one person, not one staff member is going to be able to do that um, on her own or on his own. Um, that takes a team effort and that's where the team is so critical. Um, without their input, without their dedication, we would not be able to, um, we wouldn't be where we are now. So AgriLife has been um, out here in conjunction with the team for um, phase one since 2003 and um, we've been working hard under the, the umbrella of the State Soil and Water Conservation Board who gave us funding and support to continue on with phase two and phase three. So the excavation um, was done um, through the Department of Texas Parks and Wildlife in conjunction with the Fish and Wildlife Service. They received to do the excavation and the, prepare, the preparing of the land, but that doesn't necessarily include coming back in and establishing plants. That's really key because when you can't establish a plant community in your excavated areas, wherever they may be, you run real serious risks of um, invasive species kind of creeping in and taking over an area, and then it becomes a fairly large management nightmare at that point. 
So if you can get in and establish your plant communities as quickly as possible, um, then you, you have a better chance of having long-term success where you're not having to do as much management over the long haul. And, and that's pretty important because we didn't want to create any more um, headaches necessarily for the state park. We wanted them to, to have their habitat and enjoy it too. So it was really important to be able to get these um, wetlands back. This is how this three-year project is now coming to a close. And we have shown such great success with Phase 2 and Phase 3 through reaching out, providing um, wetland field days. Uh, we really were excited to get a new project and new proposal from Sea Grant. And so we will be continuing the fund um, through Clean Water Act um, dollars from the Environmental Protection Agency for Phase 4, which I believe is going to be 44 restored acres. So when it's all done, um, you know, we're really going to be able to show even further and continued success. This is actually the, this is the, this is the part of the restoration project that's going on here at the park that I am absolutely most excited about. Uh, this is Phase 4. It is a we call it the Oakmont or the Wooded Peninsula that juts out into in between Phase 2 and Phase 3. Uh, pretty much what this area was, this area was uh, uh, at one time was a rice field. And the issue was is this particular area was too high to be flooded. So it was just allowed to grow. So the idea is, is to come into this area and remove the tallow trees and remove some of the invasives that are in here and create much more of a swamp type environment as opposed to a marsh type environment which you see out in the, the prairie system. This is going to be more of a wooded, covered, uh, wet area. One of the great things about this, about this work is you know you're making a difference. You know that you're helping to preserve things that could be gone. And it's almost like a, a kind of a resurrection because whenever we did, like I said, when we did remove the canopy from up there, some of the things that came popping up, some of the milkweeds I haven't seen in years. And it, it, it's great to see things like that that are actually still surviving. And hopefully we'll have a lot of this out here.